Good morning. Well, this is not Fletcher Field and it's not a tent. It's not the tennis courts with a bullhorn in the rain, but we are together apart and I am delighted to welcome you to the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy's first ever virtual commencement in our remarkable 87 year history. Despite the trials and tribulations of the second half of this semester and the turmoil all around us rendered by this pandemic, this is a joyous moment, not only for our graduating students, but also for their families and friends who have supported them through the whole process. To you parents, spouses, children, extended family, chosen family, and the most loyal of all friends, thank you. Students, please, wherever you are, raise yourselves from sofas, dining room chairs, mats, beach towels, bar stools and bean bags, and hug, text, wave, to those who have supported you, thank you, Fletcher family and friends. Aside from your families, there is nobody prouder of your accomplishments, small and large, than the fabulous Fletcher faculty. Our faculty, having pushed and probed you, tested and found you ready, send you out into this misshapen world as global leaders. All we ask of you is that you use the knowledge and skills acquired at Fletcher for the best of purposes. Heed the words of Philip Larkin. Life has a practice of living you if you don't live it. We are confident you will continue to live it to the full. Among the faculty, I'd like to give special recognition to extraordinary contributions. This year began under the able leadership of Dean Ad Interim Ian Johnstone, a scholar and a practitioner who represents the best of Fletcher in his thoughtfulness and decency. Dr Stephen Block has led the faculty as academic dean with fairness and flexibility through these unusual times. And it is with deep, deep gratitude that we recognise for years of extraordinary service, research and teaching, Professors Andrew Andy Hess, Professor of Diplomacy Emeritus, and Professor Hurst Hannum, Professor of International Law Emeritus. The Registrar's Office, under the leadership of Registrar Mary Delatra, has worked very hard towards today, and in addition to his more conventional role as Executive Associate Dean, I'd like to thank the Executive Producer of today's celebration, Dean Jerry Sheehan. This is an important day for our extraordinary alumni community of more than 10,000 alums across 150 countries as they receive the Class of 2020 into their midst you will enrich our alumni network even further. Since its founding, the Fletcher School has always taken great pride in the accomplishments of its graduates who have shaped the course of international affairs. The opportunities they had to serve may not have existed were it not for the doors opened by Fletcher graduates before them, the fabled Fletcher Network. Graduates, class of 2020, you now have the opportunity responsibility and privilege to carry this Fletcher tradition forward. Our alumni greeting today comes from Jordan Fabianski, a 2010 graduate of the Masters of International Business, its inaugural class. He is, as the class of 2020 would say, the mouldiest of MIBs, now leading Dahlberg advisors. He has some wonderful words of wisdom about the value of Fletcher in turbulent times. We are here to principally honour the 2020 graduating class of the Fletcher School. They have succeeded in a rigorous course of study in international relations. Among the graduates today, there are five Masters of Arts in Transatlantic Affairs, six Masters of Laws in International Law, 12 Masters of Arts, 13 Masters of International Business, 109 Masters of Arts in Law and Diplomacy, and one Doctor of Philosophy. Earlier this year, two students completed the degree of Master of Arts in Transatlantic Affairs, 11 Masters of Laws in International Law, 42 Masters of Arts, 13 Masters of International Business, 57 Masters of Arts in Law and Diplomacy, and six Doctors of Philosophy. When the names scroll, I invite you to close your eyes and imagine Dean Sheehan reading out your names, his voice brimming with pride and his eyes twinkling with delight. Today is also the day where we honour with prizes, achievements and contributions to our vibrant Fletcher community. Congratulations to all those recognised and my heartfelt thanks 
for the ways you have enriched the school with your achievements and your presence. Initiated by Dean Ted Elliott in 1983, the Dean's Medal honours those who have served notably in the international arena. Therefore, as Dean of the Fletcher School, it is my distinct honour and privilege to present our highest honour to Amina Mohammed, a daughter, mother, grandmother, and since 2018 a chieftain and queen, she was appointed to her current role by Secretary General Antonio Guterres in February 2017. Known among other things for shaping and shepherding the sustainable development goals in the largest crowdsourcing exercise the world has ever known, she expanded the boundaries of diplomacy. Her passion for justice, especially for the rights of women and children, burns so brightly you can see it in her eyes. As a woman, an African woman, the aspirations of many are attached to her. But she doesn't bow and she doesn't bend in facing some of the world's harshest and most intractable challenges. Today she will offer us insight and inspiration and I look forward to presenting the medal to Amina in person at UN headquarters in New York someday soon. Class of 2020, you are the COVID-19 class, but you will not be defined by the pandemic and its aftermath. You will be defined by your response to it. You graduate into a world in the midst of a shock, dislocating multiple systems. It will not be the only shock you face in the years to come. Other threats and threat intensifiers are hiding in plain sight. How we avoid, mitigate, manage and build greater resilience to the risks they pose will depend in part on the analytical capability, the emotional dexterity and the managerial agility of Fletcher students. You have already proven yourselves resilient. Now you will need to hone your resilient leadership skills. Perhaps the greatest leadership challenge you will face, no matter your career path, is the need to rebuild trust. Visible today in responses to the pandemic across this country and around the world are the consequences of the erosion of trust. It is a crisis of social trust, trust in science, in our institutions, in public authorities, in government at all levels, in business and finance, of the international system and alliances and the media. It is not new. Trust eroded over years cannot be won back in a day, a year or an election cycle or a quarterly earnings report. Social trust means trusting in society, including the stranger, the outsider. At the global level, it means trusting in partners, experts, institutions and agencies there to support the common good. Social trust is ultimately about us. If we have trust in us, we will get through this together. We, the peoples, as the UN Charter says, will get through this together. It may feel at the moment as if we are in a doom loop. Nationally and internationally, weak institutions and poor governance lead to low levels of trust, which leads to poorer governance. Higher levels of social trust correlate with those countries and communities managing this crisis better than their peers. The cost of distrust is always measured in lives, always has been, but now it is in 24 hour news cycles from some of the most famous cities of the developed world. The philosopher Onara O'Neill urges us to focus on trustworthiness. As we find ourselves on the downward slope of a diminishing social trust, this is a good place to start. Trustworthiness means putting good people in the right jobs in institutions that we hold to account. And day by day, law by law, regulation by regulation, agreement by agreement, institution by institution, from business to shareholders, from firms to stakeholders, from armed forces to the people they protect, we can find our way back to a world where trust is the sure ground on which we can build the international cooperation we need. Whatever path you take, this is your work. And now I'm pleased to introduce Liz Tarlow, Chair of the School's Board of Advisors, herself a holder of both a mould and a PhD from the Fletcher School. 